Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So I don't think that that's the greatest generation at all. I, I think our greatest generation uh, is the revolutionary generation, but I'm going to say something that may shock a lot of people. I think our greatest generation is yet to come. Okay. I think our I think our greatest generation is going to be people that recognize government isn't the answer. Mm -hmm. That we don't have to keep kicking our income to Washington D.C. to spend and spend and spend and spend and spend. I mean, for God's sakes! I mean, what passes for a conservative now mm -hmm. is what a democratic socialist was three months ago. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's the weird how everything's upside down on its head. And I don't care if if people are offended that I'm that I'm dumping on the president right now whatever get over it man mm -hmm. i mean i don't think that you should have subsidization of industries i don't think a business is too big to fail mm -hmm. if you make stupid investments when you make the stupid decisions you should fail and we shouldn't have to fit uh, foot the bill for that additionally you got what what a twelve hundred dollar check going to people i mean come on man like mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that are going to get money that never even kicked any money in to begin with mm -hmm. and i don't think that you should send money to dc and have them redistributed everywhere else and i understand people are hurting but why are they hurting can you imagine for the last 10 years if people could have kept the money that they earned without having to be to send money into the irs mm -hmm. you think people would be hurting if they could keep the money that they earned for the last 10 years who's the greatest violator so I don't think the solution is more D.C., more government involvement, more deficit spending, more Keynesian economics. That's already been tried and failed many, many times over. I think that's a horrible idea. I think that's naive. And I think I wouldn't really take business advice from a guy who's declared bankruptcy three times. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good it's a good business plan for businesses nowadays is how you do things, I guess. So here's the thing. <laughs> One, I, we've got a lot of people watching. I would encourage everyone to smash the thumbs up. Welcome to all the folks who came over here because of Reed. We appreciate you doing that, you know, we, we share this stuff. And I know other folks out there were sharing it as well. Um, there's so many things to get into here. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know where to start, but let's let's start with uh, something um, that we're talking about right now. So there's all these things that they're trying to set up, right? In, in this situation that we're having that's an emergency, there's things that they're trying to set up. I think, you know, we talk and we joke about the Trump money and all that, I've done it. I've joked about Trump money because people joked about the Obama money. I actually never got any of that money. Don't expect to get <laughs> any either. of this money. Um, yeah. But what are the things that you that you think, we, we can see a lot of the stuff that they want to do. What are the things you think they could do that would actually make a difference here? Because we do have an opportunity from everything that's happening right now to change things. I'm not saying they will, but what, what, what directions would you go in? Well, number one, just be honest about things. I mean, I, 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 mean, I remember a month ago, uh, people were talking about, oh, this is going to kill three million people in this country. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it became a million. Mm -hmm. And then it became a half million. Mm -hmm. And then it became a quarter million. Mm -hmm. And then today it's like 90,000. Mm -hmm. That to me sounds like a bad flu year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if you want to shut down the economy over this and, and do it, I mean, I understand there's at-risk people, man. Like, I get that, that the people 70, 75, 80 years old and older, like, I get that they've got issues. Mm -hmm. But when did it become that all of a sudden you're going to be expected to live to be 100 years old or 110? Uh, like, I, and, I, and I want people to live as long as possible. Maybe we all live to be 120, right? Right. But there's um, things killing people all the time, Reed. I mean, I think yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't I don't want to get sick. I don't want the people I love and I care about to get sick and die. Unfortunately, that happens in life as yeah. tough as it may sound. But, you know, there's lots of things that people are dying anyway. People die in car accidents. You know, there's uh there's people who don't even get a chance to actually live before they get it before they get a chance to come out of the womb and live in the world, they die. Yeah. Has anybody has anybody ever I mean, and what I want to know is, is like, do people understand that more people die of medical malpractice every year than are projected to die from this virus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we don't shut down the country for medical malpractice. We don't we don't shut down the country due to drunk drivers. Yeah. People you know, die because of cancer. Get They get yeah. cancer from the sun. You know, yeah. skin cancer, it, stuff like that. I mean, it's amazing. And like, mm -hmm. I mean, you people are like, well, what about Italy? Blah, 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 blah. Listen, I mean, first of all, Italy socialized medicine. Like that should tell you something. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> like Italy is socialized medicine. That's why people are dying there. They don't have enough resources because under socialism, everybody yeah. sucks and everybody's poor. Yeah, there's, so, and there's lots of corruption. There's corruption in America, but lots of corruption. And then there yeah. were all these rules that who knows how long it took before they got it. Like I've looked at, um, I'm into car, I'm into cars, right? So I'll confess to that. But I've looked at car shows taking place in Italy. And literally the cops roll up on these guys, like if it's a Sunday or something like that, or a weekend, and they're like, hey, no one can work in Italy on this day. There's just things like that going on. So when you have places where people like, oh, no, we have to be on vacation right now, how are they going to react to things in time? I think what it boils down to is like, do you want a society that's that's secure or do you want a society that's free, mm -hmm. right? So you ask what can be done. Uh, number one, get people back to work. Like it, the, the 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 economic depression that or the recession that's happening, all these people unemployed, mm -hmm. like that's not caused by the virus. Mm -hmm. That's the caused virus by the did, government. The government's admitting they're causing that. <laughs> right. That's caused by the government. So so in other words, if you go to work, you're going to be penalized. You're going to have to pay money, or you're going to have to do this and that. Yeah. Um, it's not even like the government's. You know what? I, I, I was thinking about this. The, okay, so we let's say we have a big problem, right? And so right now, let's say we need, let's say we we accept it, that we need ventilators, we need masks, we need this thing, we need that thing. How is the solution telling everyone to stay home? How is that the solution? Like w the, those people who are staying home could actually make things. We could somehow do things and do something about this instead of staying home, twiddling our thumbs, looking at the news, getting even crazier because the media obviously is on board with all this and they're just like, you know, pushing people more and more down, right? Yeah, and then the wild thing is that eventually everybody's going to have to come out of their little cave. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to have to come out sooner or later. We cannot indefinitely stay in our houses. Guess what's still going to be there? The virus. Yeah. There's, well, I mean, it's never going away. It's <laughs> it's never going away any yeah. more than the, than the Spanish And I think it's been did. here. I think it's also been here. Yeah, yeah. it's not so, going away. Yeah. I, you know, it, 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 if, if, if it's amazing to me how people will gladly sell their freedom away, will gladly sell their liberties away just for the illusion of feeling safe. Yeah. I, I think really at, at this point, you know, it, these numbers keep going down and down and down about the number of people killed. I mean, really what we're at with even with the White House task force on coronavirus just mm -hmm. came out today. Mm -hmm. it, it's literally comparable, almost identically to a bad flu year. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't I don't see I think we'll look back on this, man. And I've, I've told a lot of my friends this. I, I think people when the smoke is settled from all this, people are going to look back on this as the greatest overreaction in our nation's history. I agree. And you know what's going to be funny is people are going to say, "Oh, I never overreacted." And these are the same people <laughs> cussing me out for running classes, right? Yeah. These these are the same. These are the, and by the way, I had four physicians in my class last week. Mm -hmm. None of them are concerned. Yeah. Um. So so it's it's this amazing thing, and um. I, I just I just understand that yes, there are at risk people, and if there are at risk people, then why not have them be where identify them? I, yeah. Yes. And so it's it's amazing. So what can the government do? Get the hell out of our lives. Yeah. They only make things worse. Mm -hmm. They only they only burden us by either regulation or laws or taxation. I think they're despicable people. I think they're scumbag people. And I think that this government needs to be shrunk by at least 95 percent. Yeah. I hope um, that's I mean, something that comes out of all of this. Somehow I doubt it. However, I think that from what you're saying, I think there's lots of like regular people who don't look at this thing every so like we're gun guys and we think a yeah. certain way right we're very freedom oriented or whatever uh, but i've noticed my friends who aren't in those circles that the, the, all the folks listening here we all think the same way pretty much like we've got our differences but i've noticed the people in the outside circles they're thinking like that isn't that why we've had these unprecedented spikes in gun sales i mean i think that they're saying like nick's checks um in march were maybe the second highest ever yeah, it's amazing how uh, reality will, will get people to uh, lose their false altruism. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't need guns in our society. And then, of course, record gun sales now. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. So where, where, are all those, where are all those like beta male individuals that, that said that we don't need guns anymore? They're the same people scrambling to buy the guns they didn't have the balls to buy before. Yeah, wondering and, what uh, happened to the gun show loophole that I could yeah. just come in here, pay some money for this gun, and walk out. What happened to that? Oh, it was, it was hilarious. I remember, uh, I remember the first couple of weeks uh, – 
of this whole thing maybe a month ago, and and the people were stunned. They couldn't just go online <laughs> and buy a gun and have it shipped to their door. What? You mean I got to go through all this rigmarole? Yes. And it's like you know, I don't think you under. And it's weird because they act like they know what they're talking about. Like, and this mm-hmm. is so many people. They they act like they know what they're talking about when it comes to firearms. And 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 I'm just like, listen. I mean, I'm sorry that. Look, I think everyone has a God-given right to buy a firearm to protect you and your family. Like, mm-hmm. there's no question. I don't even think there should be a freaking background check system. The NRA caved on that in 94. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it doesn't what, make any – what difference does it make? Right. You're seeing it right now that, yeah. that government isn't even – during times of emergencies, government isn't evil – isn't evil. Um, they are evil, mm-hmm. but they're not even able to staff – the background check system so people are being denied you know the ability to purchase a firearm so it's like in good faith they go to the gun store fill out the paperwork and then government is unable to provide the service that they said they're going to be able to provide make sure to check out hankstrange.com you can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts